Augie in the building. So, bro, this, uh, I, I think this will be our first time ever conversating with each other. I mean, I know we've been, we've been Facebook friends for, for a good minute, especially since I started, uh, since, since before I left U.S. Express, but this, this is our first time ever, ever conversating. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some of your podcasts, uh, some of your, your YouTube channels and stuff like that. Like, way, I, I'm not even sure. How long have you been broadcasting? Because I know I started following your channel at one point, and I was, like, tuning in into the, uh, when you were calling recruiters and all that stuff. Yeah, it's been, well, I, I had my YouTube channel for over 15 years, damn near 20. I started the trucking side of things when I got with U.S. Express back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. That's when I... Yeah, I started back in 2014. Okay, so you started you started with them a year before I, before I came. Yeah, I was a company driver for about three, four years, maybe, I want to say. No, not even. It was like two years. Was that before U.S. Express or all with U.S. Express? No, uh, just uh, with U.S. Express. As a company driver, I started off in 2014. In 2016, I stayed with U.S. Express, but I leased uh, my very first truck, which was a Volvo. And that was a three-year lease. And I didn't purchase that one because, like, I wanted to jump into a newer truck. At that point, I had no plans on leaving. You know, I'm like, well, I got no work. You know, like I, I really didn't have no. Uh, like I wanted to stay with the, with US Express doing the Dollar Tree account. So what I did is, you know, I completed my contract. They uh, since it was a three year lease, they gave me like a five thousand dollar completion bonus, and I kept all the all the money that I had built up in my maintenance account. So I said, now I might as well just take all this money for myself and. Just jump into a newer truck and do another four-year lease, a brand new truck, though. Because the one I had, the, the Volvo, it was a used one. So I'm like, I wanted a brand newer one. I wanted a Freightliner. So I did that one. Uh, my second lease is the one I just completed after four years. And this time I decided to buy it out because now I'm like, yeah, I've been with Dollar Tree, you know, a Dollar Tree account for going on 10 years. Next year will be my 10th year. And now I'm getting at that point where I'm like kind of getting worn out. And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of feeling it. I'm kind of ready to tap out. So I decided to uh, purchase my Freightliner. You know, I made my final payment yesterday. So all the money that I had sitting in my uh, maintenance account was just like 39000 I used all that towards my balloon payment, which was, I think, a total of 48000 So I, most of the maintenance uh, covered most of my balloon payments. So I just had to pay like the remaining balance. And since, you know, my contract expires like in 30 days, you know, I had to make those truck payments as well. So it was like maybe 12,000 that I had to pay out of pocket. And yeah, that's what happened. What are you doing? Does that your ultimate breakfast? Y yeah. Is that the grand slam? The what? I no, I, what? Uh. Oh, man. Oh, oh. Wow, man. Congratulations. So with all that said, man, you what what made you this first thing first? What, what made you decide to even stay with U.S. Express for that long period of time, considering the fact that how what everybody had to say about it? Some people say that the lease was garbage and 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 other stuff that was said well, why why was you a success at it um maybe, maybe because i stayed with the dollar tree account and here the loads are very consistent you know what i mean it's like i do minimum three loads a week um actually two other drivers started you know we, that we basically started at a dollar tree account on the same time they jumped into the lease uh program with Tell, not through U.S. Express. Tell is the third-party uh, leasing company that U.S. Express works with. So when they jumped on it, 
you know, they were telling me, yeah, yeah, you should do it, you should do it. And like, I'm like, I was, I was kind of like iffy about it. Cause again, you know, a lot of people say the same thing about, oh, lease is a scam, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, you're going to, you know, I've known some drivers that weren't on the Dollar Tree account, but they were like over the road. And the ones that were over the road were the ones that were struggling. You know, they weren't getting enough miles. Uh, so when I saw those other two drivers, and they, were, they were telling me, they were showing me their paycheck stocks. I'm like, oh shit, you can make good money then. You know, there's money to be made here. You know, because even though our pay is is actually much higher than what over the road drivers were making, you know, over the road drivers that were making like a dollar per mile, Dollar Tree pays a flat rate of a dollar seventy three right now. I, back then it was a dollar sixty. And then we get paid our trailer unloads. And we normally do at least minimum three loads per week. You know, we do a Tuesday delivery, Thursday, and a Saturday delivery. So the reason why I stayed with this account was because it's always easy for me to get back home. You know, because I do the Dollar Tree account out of Joliet, Illinois. And I live in Chicago. And my terminal is at Marco. So we're basically like at a triangle. You know, I pick up my loads in Joliet. I park my truck in Markham, which is 30 minutes away. And then from Markham, I go to my house, which is about 30 minutes away. So I'll leave Monday morning. Like I leave my house Monday morning at 9 o'clock. So I could be at Joliet by at least 1030. Pick up my load on Monday, head out normally to the Detroit area. Tuesday morning, I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I load, you know, three to four stops, depending. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Uh, and when I'm done unloading, I come home for the night on Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, I start the cycle again for Thursday. And then Friday, I start the cycle again for Saturday. And Sundays, will be, I'll take my 34. So it was easy for me to get home. I, I'll be home usually every, every other night. And, of course, we're going to have our busy weeks and we're going to have our slow weeks. So that's why, like, for me, like, uh, I doubled up on my, um, on my maintenance account. You know, they were taking out, like, seven cents per mile on a weekly basis and I doubled it to like 14 cents. So what I did is, you know, I doubled up my maintenance account and I didn't touch it because when I was making uh, my weekly paychecks, I started up a, a second bank uh, banking account. And what I was doing, I was, I was, doing, I was putting 35% of my money into that second account. And that way, um, uh, same thing, didn't touch it, only use it for emergencies, like big repairs, which I rarely had. You know, I got a brand new truck, so it's very rare, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the reasons. There's so many reasons why I stayed with the company for so long is because the money was good, you know. Uh, home time was good, and I have a good relationship with my dispatchers, you know. Sometimes uh, I'll lose a load, and not because of my fault, but because of, the Dollar Tree, and sometimes they're trying to make up for it, and they they always always been good to me, you know. And I could just call them and let them know, hey, I can't work tomorrow. Can you just pull me off this load? And they'll have no problem with it because they know I'm a reliable work or a driver. And um, so yeah, it's it's different combinations. The relationship with my uh, dispatchers, fleet managers, uh, home time, the pay was good. So yeah. Trifecta, man, you I, I have yet to hear what well, I heard a few, but I have yet to hear a trifecta with a mega carrier, man. I mean, you 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 hit it, man. The, 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 the money was good. The fleet manager was good. The home time was good. That's the trifecta right there that, that people are trying to look for, man. And they just can't. Yeah. They just can't get it, but you 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 lucked up with that, man. And 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 again, congratulations for oh, for seeing it through, man. So Yeah. We started back in 2014, 2015. You 2014, me 2015. Back then, US Express did have Volvos. At that at that particular time, I believe their Volvos was manual. Did you have a manual or was it automatic? Uh, no, when I first started off, they were actually in the phase where they were getting rid of. I actually never seen Volvos. I mean, I, you know, you could lease it through through uh, Tel, 
and that was my first truck that I leased was a Volvo, but it wasn't through uh, U.S. Express. It was through Tel. Um, my first truck was actually a Peterbilt, and that was an automatic. And then they jumped me into another um, international because they were, you know, the one that I had was already, like, because uh, they get rid of the trucks once they reach a certain mileage, and mine was already reaching that when I first got it. So my second one was a uh, international, which was a uh, manual. But at that point, they were getting rid of all the manuals. You know, I think by 2015, 2016, that's when they started get, getting into more uh, yeah, automatics. automatics. Yep. Yeah. My my trainer had a manual. Well, both of my trainers. I I, I started with a with a messed up trainer that had a Volvo. It was a ten speed. And then the other trainer that I went out with was a Freightliner manual. But yeah, about time I got into my own truck, that uh, that first Freightliner, it was an automatic. And then after that, I was put in the KW. And yeah, I was KW all the <laughs> KW autom- automatic all the way up until I all the way up until I left, man. So. So yeah, Augie, that's like I said, it's great to hear, great to see as well, because not not too many people are 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 winning with this lease purchase deal uh through mega carriers. Maybe a few of them over at the Prime are, but not that many of them over at US Express. No, I was gonna say, uh, you know, I, I always got people that ask me the same thing. They ask me if it's worth it. And I can only speak from my experience because based on the account that I'm in, I'm in the Dollar Tree account and we're going to have our busy weeks. And yes, we're going to have our slow weeks. And when we do have our slow weeks, that's for me, like, you know, again, that's why I have money saved up just in case for that same reason. Like, you know, um, there's going to be weeks where like I have to take my truck to the dealer. So there's going to be some weeks where I don't get a paycheck. But in my opinion, it's like, it's because I already have the money saved up. You know, uh, it's all about that. It's like when you get your money, like uh, I know one driver, when he was getting his paychecks, he, you know, he was bragging about how he got like $2,500 on one week and he just spent it all. I'm like, dude, like you're supposed to be putting that to the side. You know, like, you know, what about taxes? What about breakdowns? And he was being, you know, we, I'm, I'm not going to say who he is, but I'm like, uh, not to throw shade at him, but I kind of like told him like, Hey, uh, uh, you still need to put something to the side. And I'll just say this about him. <laughs> we, I started my first truck I leased back in 2016, and he jumped on it as well. I already went to two, completed two different leases. You know, the first one I didn't purchase, but the second one I did. He is still making payments on the truck that he first got in 2016. I'm like, dude, like, I already went to two truck contracts and you still haven't paid yours off. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't ask him about financial situations. All I know is at one point, another driver told me he basically lost everything and now he's living in this truck. I'm like, yeah, because I kind of told him you need to put your money to the side. And I guess he was just going through his whole paychecks. And um, it's something that you have to consider when when you jump into the leasing program, just like, um, yeah, you get, you know, I had a paycheck. My highest paycheck that I ever had was 3600 But I didn't blow through all that. I just basically, you know, a paycheck that day, I just cut it in half. But I put this half into that account that I'm not touching, and I'll just keep this half. And uh, it's all about preferences, too, because, you know, some people, when they ask me, you know, when I'm at the few uh, islands, whatever, truck stops they'll ask me about it they ask me if it's worth it and i'll tell them if you're willing to do the hard work at the dollar tree account because we are required to unload our trailers and not many drivers want to do that and uh me it doesn't bother me you know i'll be up at five o'clock in the morning to unload you know two just uh, two to three different stops depending sometimes i'll start at 5 a.m in the morning and I probably won't finish till like five o'clock in the in the evening. Sometime sooner, you know, it all varies. There's been times where I just get one stop, one hour unloading, and they still pay me the full two hundred and ninety five dollars to unload. So it doesn't matter whether it's a full trailer, half empty trailer, or basically empty trailer, because there's been some trailers I picked up that are basically empty, but they still pay me the full amount for that thing. I've had one that had like almost 
900 miles going to Minnesota at $1.73 to unload one store, 500 pieces, which only took an hour, and I still get paid my two ninety five. So you, that was a good load for me. It was a, basically a light load. Only one hour to unload. And yeah, I, 900, uh, 900 miles, $1.73, do the minutes right there, then add another two ninety five. You know, weather was nice, so I didn't have to idle my truck. So I saved a lot of money on fuel because it was a light load. And, yeah, we'll have our good loads, we'll have our bad loads. We have our good weeks, we have our bad weeks. So it's all about preference. So, again, that's why I stayed with the company for as long as I did. Like, like at this moment, you know, um, I don't want to leave, to be honest, but I'm kind of ready to tap out because 10 years is – a long time. And I'm like, you know. It also works you know, the like, body uh, as well. Yeah. Plus, I try, try to see if I could find something that's more local. You know, some people are telling me intermodal is the way to go. And I talked to some drivers that do intermodal who are like owner operators. But they're not. When I ask them about their pay, it's not as high as I thought it was going to be. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I mean, for that, I might as well just stay where I'm at. But, yeah. Now that you're completed the lease, the truck is yours, free and clear, title in hand, you can actually put your name on the door. U.S. Express just recently was brought out by Night Swift early this year. Yeah. Do you think you getting your your truck in now was was a great time to get it in now, knowing that the change in regimes was coming why jimmy why are you still not renting your movies from the netflix give me a sit down it's um honestly i i can't answer that because i don't have many only thing i've heard is because i'm, I'm leasing to tell right transport enterprise leasing and the last time I spoke with them, they said that U.S. Express are no longer accepting uh, lease drivers from Tell. I don't know if they meant specifically from Tell or just in general. And somebody else told me that they're not looking for owner operators anymore. I mean, I don't know how true that is. You know, because I asked specifically, what do you mean? Like, are they not allowing owner operators? at the Dollar Tree account or through U.S. Express in general? And they kind of responded, uh, they don't, they're don't. they not sure, but that's basically what they heard. So I, I don't have all the info. All I know is, you know, as of right now, like I'm still in a Dollar Tree account. I'm probably not going to leave. Maybe next year. I don't know. I'm, I still got time on my hands. And I don't have a title on, in hand yet. I just made the final payment. So all my, you know, remaining balance is paid off. So... I think they said they were going to that exit to me or something like that. You know, I'll, I, they just sent me some emails. I had to do some docu-signs and stuff like that. But the truck is paid off, and I just need to wait for my title to come in. But, yeah, basically the truck is is mine. How do it feel, Augie? I mean, like, like how how how's the feeling? Like, did you put it as a goal to own the truck, or it just – happen like how do you feel about being the owner now uh both I mean, you know i felt like it was a goal and yeah happy when i walked out of the bank yesterday because i had to do a wire transfer for like twelve thousand dollars you know and i wasn't thinking about it at first it wasn't until i walked out of the bank when i finally had that paper the confirmation number you know showing that i sent this money to to uh, transport enterprise leasing, when I looked at it and I started, and I sat in my car and I had this like big sigh, you know, like oh, I did it. It's paid. It's done. So I was excited, happy, and relieved. It's like I'm no longer have to make weekly payments, you know, because I pay six six sixty five a week. So knowing that I'm gonna have an extra sixty five six hundred and sixty five dollars in my weekly paychecks, it's like an extra six sixty five in a month. That's like what twenty uh, 
twenty almost twenty six hundred dollars. That's a basically a house payment, depending on what kind of house you buy. But yeah, it was like a little bit of everything. Just but yes, finally, this is my first semi that I actually own. It's mine. I paid it off. You know, I'm no longer contracted. I'm, I no longer have to follow tells contracts. You know, cause sometimes they get a little bit anal. Sometimes they'll, you know, because uh, normally they pay for my own oil changes. You know, I don't use my maintenance account, and sometimes they get bitchy about it. About, oh, well, you're going to have to send pictures, blah, 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 of, of the receipts. And they're, you know, I mean, they don't really hassle me too much, but, you know, it's just now that I, knowing that I don't have to answer to you no more, like, it was just like a big relief for me. In the future, of course, you're going to sit down with yourself and, and figure out what your moves going to be in the future. Would that include, would that include getting your own authority so you can, uh, so you can break free from U.S. Express? I've thought about it. I had some drivers tell me that, you know, uh, that I should do it. The problem is, like, I don't have much experience outside of U.S. Express as an owner-operator. You know what I mean? So, because I, I have looked around, and maybe I should talk to more drivers more often, more uh, drivers who actually have their own authority and see what what are the benefits and what are the downfalls. Because uh, I heard there is benefits and there's also downfalls. I've heard a little bit of both. And when I look on some of the jobs, like I'm trying to stay in Chicago, I'm trying to stay regional. You know, I don't want to go over the road. And a lot of places I see, most of them, the ones that I do find like uh, online jobs, some of them say, Oh, you have to run under our authority for, you know, if you want to come in as an owner operator. So I'm like, okay, well, um, that's why I'm like, okay, would it be best? Because to my knowledge, I'm, and I don't know much, that's just me guessing. If you run your own authority, you're responsible for your own plates, right? You're responsible for all your tolls, all your fuel, and basically everything. I believe am I correct so. Or am I, I, wrong? I believe so. So, and all the if the stickers, the all the permits, that all runs on me. Am I wrong or am I right? I believe so. Or you're not sure. Neither? I'm not sure. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, I I talked to so many owner operators, few that have they own authorities and uh and few that doesn't the few that do they they have difference of opinions on on authorities so maybe continue to do your research maybe get into a facebook group because facebook groups i i feel facebook groups are always the 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 best place to go to to connect with 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 people that you're trying to get information from. I know a lot of people turns around and be like, well, go to YouTube, but YouTube now as YouTube then, I just feel no, because a lot of people on YouTube put out- It's flooded. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's flooded, number one, and it's a lot of misinformation out there on YouTube. So yeah. with, with the Facebook group, you could probably get into a, a good tight knit owner operate type of group and network a month there to get to get the information and the answers that you're looking for right right yeah that's why i'm like um again like you said there's a lot of misinformation out there and uh again when people ask me about is it worth leasing i can only speak from my experience and i can only speak on behalf of you know on the dollar tree account this is, you know, what I do. This is, you know, where I live. These are the days I have to work. These are the days I, you know, on Sundays, my 34th, when I take it, you know, the ups and downs, you know, for me, the down is not unloading. I actually prefer the unloading. The only down part is sometimes the stores I deliver to, sometimes they're shorthanded, sometimes they're too slow, or for some reason, you know, if I'm running late to 
you know, if my first stop screws up, they're running late. Now I'm running late to the next stop. Now I'm running late to the next stop. And by the time I get to my last stop, they tell me, well, their, their crew already left, so I have to wait to the next day. So that's one of the downfalls right there. You know, and sometimes I lost loads because of that. You know, I, I do a Tuesday load. And all of a sudden, my last stop on Tuesday tells me I have to wait till Wednesday. Well, now I have to call my dispatch and let them know. Well, I'm stuck here. I'm seven hours away. I can't do. I can't do my Thursday load. I'll lose that load now. So yeah, it it doesn't happen like on a weekly basis. It probably happens maybe once, twice a month. Not but not twice a month. Once every once every blue moon. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. The- what what made you choose the dollar account in the first place? Like when I came there, they tried to talk me into the dollar account. And I was like, no, um, I'm, I'm good. But you, I mean, um, did did they talk you into it, or you or you just said, yeah, I'll I'll take it. Uh, here's the thing about me: I actually worked for Dollar Tree stores before I became a trucker. I worked for Dollar Tree stores starting in 2002 all the way down to 2012. So I worked for the company for 10 years. So I was familiar with the Dollar Tree policies and all that stuff because I was a store manager at one point up until they fired me. And at that point, that's when I, like, I wanted to do something different. So when I was collecting unemployment, I was working part-time job at Family Dollar. And I was also working on getting my CDL. And originally, I was going to go with Falcon because I was desperate for money. You know, <laughs> I needed a job, so I was applying at different places. So Falcon was uh, the first person to call me, and I said, yeah, they were right there in Gary, Indiana. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll take this job, whatever. I'll take anything at that point because I just wanted a job. I wanted to get out there and go to work. And then um, I actually know a driver. I don't know if you know him. His name is Rock. Uh, we call him Rock, but his name is James Jackson. Uh, he's, he was in the Dollar Tree account, so I knew him. And he's the one who told me, you should go on Dollar Tree uh, account uh, 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 in U.S. Express. And I told him, well, I applied, but they haven't called me. And sure enough, right when I was doing orientation and Gary and Deanna with Falcon, that's when U.S. Express finally called me. And they asked me, you know, they offered me uh, Dollar General and Dollar Tree. And originally, I was going to do Dollar General at first. Because, I, you know, the way they make it sound, it was a lot easier than the Dollar Tree account. Because, you know, Dollar Tree account, you had to unload by hand, each box by hand, using rollers. You know, Dollar General, everything's our roll chainers. You know, you put it in the the lift gate, lower it down, and bring it into the back room. Sounded easy. Like, yeah, I'll do that one. That sounds easy. Oh, hell no. I did Dollar General for for about five weeks because I had to go with a trainer since I had no experience. And I hated it. Those roll chainers were just way too heavy. Uh, and then I did it at the winter time, which was the worst time because a lot of these places, they don't shovel their area. So I was constantly, you know, slipping, trying to, you know, uh, yeah. And my trainer even told me he heard his back one time because these rotators are so heavy. And sometimes, you know, when you push it towards the lift gate, the brakes doesn't catch the rotator and it just flies right off. And like, damn. And then you're the one who has to pick everything up and you, even the damaged products. So I'm like, yeah, I told my recruiter, like, you know what, um, I'll do Dollar Tree because that one's more easy. It's, it's actually more easy. You just put the boxes on the um, on the rollers and let gravity do its job. So, so yeah, that's why I did the Dollar Tree account because I was familiar with the comp- with the um, with the company, and I figured it was more since you know the DC is in Joliet, it was actually more closer to to my house. Because Dollar General was out of Marion, Indiana, which is about, I believe, about three hours away. So I'm like, well, I could probably be more, you know, they kind of convinced me, oh, yeah, you could be home on a daily basis with Dollar Tree. I'm like, oh, that's right. You know what? Because you guys are right here in Joliet. So if I do a Chicago load, I could be, you know, home every day as a company driver. Now that I'm a lease owner operator, uh, it benefits me to do more the longer runs because that's where I make most of my money through mileage. You know, when I was a company driver, I could make more money doing multiple loads a day. You know, sometimes I do two trailers a day or do them back to back because my money will come from unloading pay 
as a company driver. So, yeah, it was multiple reasons. One, because I knew uh, Rock, you know, he's, he used to deliver to my store almost every week at one point. And, yeah, that's why I did it. Plus, the, you know, they offer you that, you know, the sign-on bonus at that point, I think it was like $3,000. Like, so I did it for multiple reasons. It's a sign-on bonus. It's closer to home. I knew the the account, uh, the the company Dollar Tree. So, yeah, that's why I did it. And plus, I want and plus I I wanted to do something that you know I, I'm a physical guy. You know what I mean? Like, no disrespect to the drivers who want to drive all day. Like, for me personally, I don't like doing that. <laughs> I don't want to drive ten hours a day. I I'll get tired out real quick. I want to find something where I have to unload. You know, that, you know, so that was one of the things I was looking for when I first, you know, got my CDL and I started applying at places. You know, I I, need, I wanted to get my experience first. And once I got my experience, then I'll start looking for something where I get to unload. Because I was looking into maybe, oh, maybe I should do like the Coca-Cola account where they deliver in the Chicago area or Pepsi or even, you know, like, I don't know, the beer companies, you know, like, something at that point, you know, because I wanted to unload. I want something to where I'm moving. So, because for me, it helps the day go by quicker. So, yeah, multiple reasons. All right, my guy, Augie. Man. Well, congratulations on owning your first truck. Hopefully it's the first of many. And, and hopefully everything works out for you in the future, whether you want to stay with U.S. Express or not, man. Before we get on up out of here, man, what, what, what's the backing? Like, when you first started, I know the backing was like was like crazy at some of them stores. But now I know your backing should be a little bit tighter than what it was when you first started. What, what's some of your, I, I, I'd say, some of your worst backing experience at one of those dollar stores? Can I help you? Maybe we can help you. We're here to offer you protection. Oh, well, we've got all the protection we need. Oh. oh. Thanks, but no thanks, fellas. Oh. Um. Honestly, yeah, at first I struggled with the backing part. But what I did was, you know, because I wasn't very good at it, to be honest. Because I mostly did Dollar General at that point. So... Uh, but the Dollar Tree account, sometimes you got to, like, especially in Chicago, sometimes you got to block the street, back away into uh, alleyways, and, yeah, it's always different. And for me, what I did is I knew I wasn't good at backing. So uh, what I would normally do is, like, whenever I'm at the D.C., I would look for somewhere where there's nobody around, and I will practice there. I just kept practicing, 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 and practicing. Even when I arrived to my first stop, if they got a big parking lot, you know, I will pick a spot to where, like, let me see if I can get my trailer at this angle. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you have to jackknife it, and sometimes you have to angle it. it. It always varies. So, and with experience, like, yeah, I learned a lot, especially in the Dollar Tree account. Now, as far as, Worst experience? I can't really think of one. Uh, maybe one where I had to kind of blindside around the building, and there was not much room for me to pull up. And it was dark. There was no lights back there. So, yeah, that was probably the worst one. It took me about 20 minutes to actually back it in there. <laughs> so, number one, I'm blindsiding. Number two, it's dark. And number three, there was no room for, for me to pull up, you know. So when, so every little inch mattered. When I was backing, every little turn that I was making, it mattered. I had to use every possible inch that I could think of. So, but, yeah, but, but you know, after I go through one store and I first struggled, the next time I'm like, okay, I remember this store. I remember how to do it now. And it's much more easier for me now. Uh, but yeah, uh, backing, yeah, it's something that I highly recommend for some drivers to practice with more often. You know, pick an area where there's nobody around, 
and practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, man, that's it. Hey, yeah. man, I, hey, bro, I appreciate it. Awesome conversation, my man. I mean, this, and like I said, this is our first time actually getting it in with each other, man. So I appreciate the, I appreciate the love that. Dollar trees. <laughs> it's it's not it's not for everyone. Trust me, I I get it. I've I've had drivers who, I've met drivers who didn't even last a week here. I've had to literally go pick up another load because the driver did one stop and he said nope. So I had to go repower you know, pick up that trailer, you know, after I was done unloading mine, I have to, you know, I would have to swap out trailers because the driver said, nope, this thing for me. And like, I get it. It's just about uh, me. I like to move a lot and I unloading actually helps me. What I normally do is I'll have a podcast on, watch a video as I'm unloading. And it's all about like how to make your job easier. Like for me, uh, I see some drivers when they unload, I'm like, dude, you're making more work for yourself or you're making your job a little bit more harder than it should be. You know, like I grease up my rollers. That way, if I have to put a piece of candy, a uh, box of candy, that weighs nothing. And the rollers, gravity will do the job for me. That box will just slide right down. As long as you have a good setup, that, that box will slide right down. I've seen some drivers where they'll put like, 10, 20 boxes, and you can hear that the rolls are rusted, and then they have to push. Like, well, now you're making more, you know, you're making your job a little bit more difficult than it should be. You shouldn't have to push, you know, unless you have a dock, because at that point, well, depending on the dock. Should just put know? it on, should just put it on a roller, and it should just flow right into the, right, right into it the door. It should just flow right into the store, you know, and just pace it. You know what I mean? Like, you got to pace it. You just can't send, you know, 10 small boxes of, of candy and then send a case of bleach right after it. It'll literally knock those boxes up right out like, like, like pinballs. And it frustrates the employees because now they're complaining, well, he's knocking boxes all over the place. And, you know, like, again, I work for Dollar Tree, so I know how to unload. You know, I know how to make their job easier. And if I make their job easier, they'll make my job easy. So it's like a working relation, uh, partnership, you know what I mean? And most of, most of the time, they appreciate me. They say, oh, yeah, you're the best one we've had in a long time. Some of these drivers, they just shove everything all at once. I'm like, yeah, like, I don't do that because I've been in the other end. And I know how. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me wanna track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama wanna get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy, bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.